Great, thank you very much, Astrid, and it's a pleasure to be part of such a very great panel and a great discussion on decentralization, which is a subject I really love. Um, most definitely, thank you for the congratulations, and uh, definitely we've got work to do locally, regionally, and globally on local government. Because uh, recently, as I was preparing for this interface, I had one big question. If decentralization is a governance policy and tool where we intend to involve people, why is it the national government and not committing to empowering local government? Because we, we recently come out of the United and Cities and Local Government um, uh, Global Conference, and I kept on hearing colleagues speaking about the issue of funding local government, of empowering them, of giving them capacity. And I know for sure that much of the decentralization policies are anchored in the law. And the law is about commitments by government on what they're supposed to do to make sure that the local governments are actually performing and functional. So the biggest question we have on the table as local government factors is why is it, what is it that we're not doing enough? to remind, and I'm not even sure that we should be reminding because many of them made the commitment in constitution, this is a chapter with the people. They shouldn't be reminded. They should be actually meeting their commitments and promise to the people. So going forward and definitely back to Uganda, the city's question is quite very interesting for us because uh, we now have new cities, but we are grappling with the policy, the supportive policy and legal framework. Of course, we have the Local Government Act in Uganda, which is good enough because in that law, a city is equivalent to a district. But that draws us to the question of how are we placed the urbanization agenda within the context of local government? And uh, it, it is the question that new city mayors are asking, are we really akin to a district which is rural? Should a district be perceived only as being rural? Or should this be in a position to grow and develop and urbanize and all that comes in? So it's really a planning issue in that context that when the districts are formed from the get go, we should be thinking about urbanization uh, as part of the uh, developmental campus to show how far we have come. Um, I've been working with the association, like I mentioned, and much of the role of the association is to really bring out the voice and positions of local government. So that government can work on those issues, not just government, because we are about all the actors in the local government, stakeholders, even development partners. And uh, for sure, I think in Uganda, we put our best foot forward. And uh, we are in a place where um, if you want to speak about local government, you need to make a reference point to all and see what you've got to do to, to stay there. Uh, and uh, the, the gains that have been made so far are reflected in the kind of policies that are coming out. Uh, today, we are actually speaking a lot about the new cities agenda and improving funding, alternative funding options. Uh, and that also speaks to the history. Uh, uh, one of the previous speakers mentioned uh, the genesis of local government. For countries like Uganda, we focus on strengthening governance and democratic participation. So much of the investment concentrated on the political and administrative operations. And uh, because of the years that we've taken in, in investing in that process, the issue of developmental local government is just coming to the fore. And perhaps this is why we realize that now the cities need to come on board because this is where the people are. We need to make them more livable. This is where the workforce is that is going to grow our economy. Much of it, of course, the rural, uh, we take cognizance of them, but much of the action, the industrial art development that is happening in the cities. So we are now speaking more about developmental local government and local economic development, and now bigger and uh, in a much more focused way. The, the city development agenda. Definitely, when you're going to talk about development, funding is an issue, and that's why it's becoming an issue. Because now we need to develop, we need to make investments, so we need money. Now, local government in Uganda, and I want to believe that many have similar cases uh, when I look across the region, the issue of them being treated as corporate investment records has not been uh, prioritized, so to speak. They were look, being looked at as much as of execution of policies and programs of government. But now they have this corporate status where they should be able to have the capacity to decide on investment, um, and generate capital for investment, pre create enabling policies and then environment for those investments, but they need money for that. So definitely money is a big issue and it should be looked into. And uh, this is where who's on its, on its part is uh, in engaging government to provide more funding look at the alternative um, options on the market and empower local government. 
deal with those restrictive laws and policies because they are restrictive. And local government cannot invest or borrow without uh, having to get authorization from the central government. So what kind of devolution of power and authority is that a question on the table? And how are we going to move it into getting back, back and forth uh, to get authority from somewhere? Uh, meaning we have to sell a point for a priority interest for our jurisdiction. It is something that is quite um, uh, difficult, so to speak, for the local government. But yes, this is where we are. I think governments need to um, create a little bit more room. I, many of the governments are struggling with full devolution. Kenya is giving us a very good uh, example if I go regional now. We're seeing the things that devolution can do when you fully empower local governments. Although um, they are simmering, simmering tendencies towards a bit of decentralization and clamping down on the funding. I see our colleagues in the umbrella bodies there engaging governments a bit on funding which has come late, funding which has not been adequate. And, and that will draw back on the milestones they have made if they decide to take a step back on the progress which they've made. Um, local governments in the region of state remain critical because local governments are, for me, I call them the right hand of government. ESC is making policies to be implemented by national governments, and national governments work through local governments. So the regional, when making this policy, should involve the face and voice of local governments. So that we remind them and give them the practice, the experiences from a practical perspective of what needs to be done, because we know best the things that even the national governments have fallen short of. So we need to remind even the regional body not to make the same mistakes that we have a seamless development agenda at the regional level as well. So this is quite the voice of local governments at the EAC level is speaking to the EAC to make sure that we have the coordination and the sticking together of the member states, the government and the local government as well. Um, so for me, from the perspective of the associations, associations have proved to be a crucial tool and partner to government and development partners in the decentralization journey, uh, something you cannot do without because local government entities, it is called them, are quite busy, uh, focused on delivering the services to their people. So someone has to organize them. Someone has to be an intermediary. As they continue doing their work, someone has to be able to follow up on those aspects and commitments government is supposed to do uh, for the good of, of the local government and see them through to allow seamless progression of implementing that policy. I could stop there for now and allow for perhaps more feedback and I can share in terms of this one. Thank you very much.